This idea of women's soft force or women's jihad is seen as being a particularly feminine kind of political participation that is, is challenges the dominant conception um, of jihad as military str armed struggle. I'm the author of Soft Force, Women in Egypt's Islamic Awakening. Uh, this book was initially conceived as a rebuttal or an argument against popular representations of, of Muslim women, especially in the US media and in the West. So I began looking very closely at Muslim women's writings, mainly in Egypt, and looking at how they talked about Islam, how Islam influenced their lives, and how they lived their lives within Islam and what they talked about and what they said about Islam. And really contrary to assumptions about Muslim women is they were not hiding behind their veils in their homes, but they were very public presences on the public stage, speaking to popular audiences, and had a really visible place in, uh, in, in politics in Egypt. And this visible place didn't, wasn't just confined, confined to Egypt, but then spread throughout the Muslim world partially because their voices had such resonance. And I was curious about why these ideas really hadn't been picked up at all in the West, or at least in, in Western media. So I began scouring these publications um, just to, to look at the particular motifs that they, that they were talking about. So Soft Force proceeds roughly chronologically, beginning in the Nasser era, through the Sadat era, through the Mubarak era up until the present. And I proceed roughly through a set of themes that I look at through, uh, through different authors. Uh, each of the themes, each chapter is de dedicated to a particular theme. The first one is education. The second one is Islamic law. The third chapter uh, in soft force is on motherhood. The fourth chapter is on uh, the power of veiling. The fifth chapter, women's work, both inside the home and outside the home. And the sixth chapter is on the family as the political unit of the Islamic Ummah. In Soft Force, I end with an epilogue that addresses and explores the poetics of these women's Islamic political commitments.